Uh, and as a comparison with some of the early forms, I think this is fairly remarkable. On your left-hand side of the, of the screen is a uh, carving uh, between 30 and 60,000 years old done by a Neanderthal in Gordon Cave, uh, Gibraltar. On the right-hand side of the screen is uh, what we're interpreting as a Naledi carving. Did archaeologists just discover the Rosetta Stone of humanity? Although archaeology has shown that prehistoric humans interacted with one another over great distances in both time and space to create hand axes and spearheads, did they also share other cultural practices, such as symbols? It is acknowledged that creating painted, etched, or engraved designs on cave walls or other surfaces represented a significant cognitive development for humans. Formerly thought to be unique to late Pleistocene Homo sapiens, such intentional designs are now widely interpreted as signifying, recording, and transmitting information in a durable manner. Long ago, a tribe of Neanderthals struggled to maintain a single flame in the timeless 1981 film, Quest for Fire. It was common to see our sister and brother species either portrayed as noble savages or demonized as savage brutes. Groundbreaking new research by Lee Berger and John Hawkes et al has shown that Neanderthals and possibly middle Pleistocene Homo erectus made these kinds of marks as well. It has been argued that intentionality, a key component of meaning-making, necessitates significant levels of cognitive abilities not present in species with smaller brain sizes. Such durable signs indicate this intentionality. In fact, the development of these symbolic systems is considered to be a fundamental aspect of what it means to be human. Here, we present the first known instance of abstract designs and shapes engraved in the South African Rising Star Cave's Dinalidi subsystem. Berger and his team of 30 were able to identify markings etched into the cave's dolomitic limestone walls. These images show the 200,000 to 300,000 year old Homo naledi etched crosshatch from South Africa, compared to the crosshatch engravings found on the cave floor of Gorham's Cave in Gibraltar and attributed to manufacture by a Neanderthal circa 60,000 years ago. Cross-hatching and other geometric shapes are deeply impressed in the engravings that are described here. These engravings appear to have been prepared and smoothed onto their surfaces, and obviously had the ability to control fire so that they could see in the darkness. Yet, one early anthropologist wrote of ancient man, darkness characterized the being to which the fossil belonged and the thoughts and desires which once dwelt within it never soared beyond those of the brute. These discoveries have now changed this viewpoint. There may have been repeated handling or rubbing of the rock in some spots, and there may also have been evidence of the application of dirt or sand to the surface through artificial means. Between 241,000 and 335,000 years ago, Homo naledi entered this section of the cave network and interred bodies in the Dinalidi chamber and the nearby antechamber. Researchers associate the engravings, which are located on a pillar in the antechamber, and extend into the natural fissure corridor connecting the two chambers, with hominality. When combined, the crosshatched lines of the most noticeable engravings give the appearance of a hashtag, also known as a crosshatched symbol. A pointed or sharp lithic fragment or tool was probably used to carefully and repeatedly insert the lines into the grooves. This eliminates the likelihood of an accidental or utilitarian beginning. Some have hypothesized that there may be a connection to the similarly cross-hatched rocks from South Africa's Blombos Cave that look out over the Antarctic Ocean. Could early Homo sapiens have learned about symbolism from hominality, or even interbred with them? Anything is possible given all the new information that is being discovered about our ancient brothers and sister species. There are multiple examples in this situation and markings with a similar age have been discovered at other sites dating back at least 75,000 years. Someone dragged the tip of an ochre-rich rock across another rock, approximately 73,000 years ago in the cave that is now known as Blombo's Cave, creating a pattern of red, cross-hatched strokes. The creator of the marks has not been identified, and their intentions have not been made clear. In light of this, it wouldn't be shocking to learn that people at Blombo's Cave had the ability to draw 73,000 years ago. Ochre processing had obviously been going on for a very long time prior to that as evidenced by the similar crosshatch patterns used in their engravings. In Blombo's cave, crosshatch designs frequently appear on engravings and drawings. Archaeologists study them at a different location that is more than 30 miles away. They can be found on ostrich eggshell fragments that come from the other side of South Africa. 
The meaning of that pattern probably changed over time, but it almost seems to be a part of the human repertoire. Given the expectation that natural selection would favor features that increased the probability of survival, Darwin developed the theory of sexual selection to explain the evolution of adornments and symbols, which seemed extravagantly expensive and remarkably wasteful. Yet, researchers have discovered rocks from Olajisele, Kenya, that date back 300,000 years and were used to make ochre paint. Due to the discovery of a skullcap that resembles Homo naledi at the site, Lee Berger and John Hawkes have hypothesized that Homo naledi was the creator of these artifacts. It was obvious that they had been purposefully ground with a chisel-like tool to remove the red powder inside. Nobody is sure what they were trying to accomplish with that paint, but it's more proof of how old symbolic human behavior is. All of this is a part of a new theory about our origins, according to which both our bodies and culture developed in convoluted ways. In actuality, man is a tool-making animal at all ages and stages of his development. Hands, nails, and teeth were the earliest forms of weapons. When these were discovered, fire and flame immediately followed stones and branches that had been torn from trees. Remarkably, the first known Neanderthal cave art is also a hashtag, which is a startling turn of events. The 39,000-year-old engraving was discovered in Gibraltar's Gorham's Cave. In Gorham's Cave in Gibraltar, the largest and most elaborate piece of Neanderthal cave art was found. The long-held belief that Neanderthals were simply an inferior, more primitive relative of early modern men, doomed to extinction by their lack of sophistication, has been challenged by a number of significant discoveries about them in recent years. Any type of cave art has historically been credited to the appearance of early modern humans. Therefore, any assertion that Neanderthals had the mental capacity to create some art deserves further study. Thirteen marks carved into the bedrock of Gorham's cave in Gibraltar make up the discovery. They have an uneven depth and a look that is reminiscent of the popular hashtag mark made by Homo naledi. Frequently, human species are portrayed as being monolithic, when in fact Neanderthals and other human species would have lived in tribes with different customs, languages, and cultural practices. One possible explanation is that the markings were used to mark the territory of a particular tribe. According to the study that was published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, careful analysis appears to have demonstrated that the marks were made by repeatedly cutting into the bedrock with pointed stone tools. The results of the research team's experiments support the idea that these marks were intentionally made because it was very difficult to replicate marks that wide and deep as the prehistoric ones. This is significant because it is well known that when the rock was soft enough, bears and other animals left their markings on cave walls. At this location, bear bones have been discovered during previous excavations. These bear scratches have reportedly been found beneath some of Chauvet Cave's oldest paintings in Europe. The eight crisscrossing lines that make up the hashtag engravings were discovered on a bedrock sheet that was about 16 inches above the cave floor and acted as a sort of shelf. The artwork was discovered beneath a layer of prehistoric sediment that was strewn with stone tools that were likely made by Neanderthals 39,000 years ago, just before the species went extinct. In that case, the hashtag drawing would be even older. Scientists claim that the markings were intentionally made. Early modern humans had not, according to researchers, migrated to Gibraltar at the time the drawings were made. They are also confident that the markings were made on purpose because it may have taken 317 meticulous strokes to complete the pattern. Given its size and location, this engraving was likely intended to be seen by others in the cave in addition to its Neanderthal creator. Gorham's cave provides the clearest evidence to date that Neanderthals produced works of art, contrary to earlier theories held by archaeologists. The Neanderthals took care of the sick and elderly, buried their dead, painted their bodies, and wore shell and feather jewelry. Now that we know they created art as well, it is even more obvious that the species' cognitive capacity was higher than previously believed. This demonstrates a capacity for the development of sophisticated symbolic thought, and makes a significant contribution to the redefining of Neanderthal culture in our minds. It is fresh evidence that humans have the capacity to create sophisticated symbolic thought, an abstract expression even before Homo sapiens. However, researchers have also discovered much older abstract engravings in various locations around the globe, such as a 540,000-year-old Joven shell that was engraved by Homo erectus. 
Ancient hominins may have also created engravings in less durable materials, especially wood and soft bone that have long disappeared from the archaeological record. Along with providing the earliest evidence of multiple interments and funerary actions, data from recent explorations in the Dinalidi subsystem also show one of the earliest examples of a mortuary practice in hominins, and show how meaning-making first emerged in these early hominins. Homo naledi, a very brainy hominin, was engaging in these behaviors. These findings cast doubt on a number of fundamental beliefs about the behavioral and cognitive evolution of Pleistocene hominins. Indeed, the evidence from Dinalidi challenges fundamental beliefs about the function and significance of encephalization in human evolution, by pushing back the temporal origins of mortuary and funerary behaviors, and linking the development of meaning-making with a small brain species. This suggests that there is a wider range than previously believed in the socio-cognitive niche of hominins, and how it relates to activities that produce meaning. The claim that technological and cognitive advances in human evolution are solely related to the evolution of larger brains, is challenged by the association of these activities in subterranean spaces that were accessed and altered by the small brain species, Homo naledi. The extinct hominin Homo naledi was interred in the Rising Star Cave system of South Africa, according to recent excavations. Hominins dug holes that disrupted the subsurface stratigraphy and buried the remains of Homo naledi individuals, resulting in at least two distinct features within the Dinalidi chamber and the hill antechamber, according to a combination of geological and anatomical evidence. These burials are the oldest ever documented in the hominin record at least 100,000 years older than any evidence of burials of Homo sapiens. These interments, and other data point to the possibility that Homo naledi engaged in a variety of mortuary practices inside the cave system. These findings demonstrate that mortuary customs were not unique to Homo sapiens or other large-brained hominins. Yet, burials may have only been one type of ancient funerary practice, with other options being cremation and excarnation. Both of these practices would not leave any evidence behind, which accounts for their absence in the archaeological record. Surprisingly, anthropologists were still debating whether Neanderthals and other prehistoric humans were barbaric savages, whether they used fire, and whether they had speech. In actuality, they had advanced cultural practices, spoken languages, and fire-making technology. New insights into the minds of ancient humans suggest that they may have been much more cultured, than their previous reputation for being ruthless savages suggests, nonetheless, it is challenging to enter the minds of a long-extinct human species.